Hi everybody, this is Robin Kurt with Two Brothers Hobby, and today we're taking a look at the Top Flight F4U Corsair 60 size Gold Edition ARF. Yep, a um, extremely well-known plane, and we've flown it in smaller sizes, we've flown it in bigger sizes, and we've flown it in. It's been modeled a lot, yep. as you'd mentioned. It's a very heavily modeled uh, aircraft. This particular this particular one is the Gold Edition ARF uh, from Top Flight, so it carries over a lot of those details you kind of look for on a uh, on a, a scale representation or semi scale representation yeah. of a Corsair. And, uh, and of course, that's what attracted us to it. Is sure, you got to have all the little bells and whistles and details and yep. nooks and crannies. And, and the gold, like you know, the gold edition kits are great, um, but not everybody's a builder. Yeah. So with the fact that this is being, a, you know, yep. made into an ARF, and you're seeing a lot more top flight kits being done into, as ARFs, um, and I think it's an, a welcome addition because you know the, the hobby is so saturated with get me up in the air now and let's fly, mm -hmm. you know, and we're losing builders all the time. Yep. Um, which. That's a whole debatable issue that we don't even sure. need to get into, but it's I think nice to seeing, see that they're coming out with kits that were only previous available. Yeah, to those the, down, who, the downside is you get to the airfield and you see a bunch of ARF type planes. Sure. You don't see what you used to see out of the builders, exactly. and that was great detail nose to tail and, yep. and a lot of those cool features. Yeah. So, yeah, yeah. I, I agree. It's definitely a compromise on what you see yep. flying at your local field. So, this is that marriage of the two. You got gold edition details, and but it's in an ARF, so yep. it takes a lot of the work out of it for you. Let's go ahead and cover some of the specs. The Top Flight F4U Corsair 60. Has a 62 and a half inch wingspan, 699 square inch wing area. Wing loading is 28 to 31 ounces per square foot. Overall length is 15 and a half inches. The uh, weight uh, box specs show eight and a half to nine and a half pounds. Uh, tested empty weights about nine pounds, so we're within uh, within specs. And the price at the time of this review is 364 dollars and 98 cents. Um, now the two brothers setup, we used the OS FS95 V4 stroke Ring 60P engine. Uh, six Futaba S9001 uh, servos, two S3004 standard servos. We used our T8FG Super Transmitter and married that up with a R6008 HS receiver. We used life source uh, uh, lithium iron phosphate batteries, 6.6 uh, volt 2S. And then we went ahead and went with the optional uh, Robart 615 100 degree rotating main retracts along with the Robart 188BR standard air control kit. Their 190 airline quick disconnects and then finish it off with the Robart 3 8 inch straight robo struts. And then the final note on that portion, we did have to add in about two ounces of lead strip weights in the nose to get the CG that we were looking for, but that pretty much totals up everything that, yeah. that we had to add in to get it, to get it ready to fly. Yeah. Um, you know, we, we talk, something interesting too is you've got a lot of flexibility on the power plant and you look at the actual specs. You can go with a, a four stroke, you can go with a two stroke. Mm -hmm. I've seen guys fly these with uh, two stroke gas engines. I mean, there's a lot of different things that you can accommodate this airframe yeah. with and achieve your CG, and that's really the key. Yeah. Um, Rob, you were partially involved in this build. We built it uh, both as com kind of combined effort. Um, a lot of details to it. Uh, yeah, there are. There are. When we look at ARFs, and I think we go back to the traditional or true ARFs, when ARFs first came out, they weren't so complete as they are now. No. You'll have something that I would almost say is a, is a near ready to fly. Maybe it doesn't come with a transmitter, but the aircraft is pretty much completed. Yeah. There's just so little to do, and they call it an ARF still. Um, this is more of a true ARF. This You've is got definitely. A lot of little detail pieces to put on. You're going to spend a lot of time uh, cutting in all of your ports on the cowl. Well, like you said, you know, this is uh, along with so many engine options, there's a lot of options you can do to the airframe as far as how you want to equip it. Mm -hmm. um, of course, they make some provisions in the kit for your standard things like push rods and such, but beyond that, you're pretty much on your own. Yeah, you're kind of cutting through uh, um, a lot of your components. Yep. It does ship with standard landing gear, uh, so yep. it comes with the tires and the wheels sure. and uh, and some stick landing gear, yeah. fixed landing gear, yeah. and the actual pucks or the, or the mounting brackets for it. Yep. Um, pop those out. We put in our, our uh, uh, Robart retracts yep. for that scale look. And yep. really, if you're going to have this with all the detail above, if you drop below the wing line and you see you know, rods sticking out sure. with wheel, it's yeah, gonna look kind of yeah, goofy, yeah. so. Well, this, is one, of the, this is, is one of those situations where if you're going to jump into a kit like this, you should have the finances behind you to go all the way with it. Yeah, you'd I hope mean, that if you, you want, want it to, to finish look good. it out. Exactly. Yeah. Yep. Um, not that you couldn't just put the wire landing gear on it and put mm -hmm. some fake struts on it. They do offer, you know, the covers. Cosmetic struts. Cosmetic yeah. covers, which would be fine, but mm -hmm. you know, when you get into a bird this size, th this size and up is where you start feeling uh, what the meaning of flying dirty means. No, yeah. You yeah. know, you feel that landing gear down, you're gonna, you're gonna feel a difference with the way the air goes over the wings, especially this gull wing is gonna react differently than a straight wing yep. or a slight dihedral. So you wanna tuck those mains up out of the way and fly. Absolutely, it's gonna yeah. clean up the airframe and you'll get a yeah. lot of the aerobatic capabilities out sure. of the stuff. 
sure. So, but um, with this having the full uh, uh, scale prototype, mm -hmm. you know, one-off scale or whatever you call it, you're the builder guy. Yeah. Scale like standoff. Yeah, standoff. Standoff scale. Standoff scale. Standoff scale, kind of like prototype uh, <laughs> flaps. Yeah. Um, it does have the split, you know, the, the three segment flaps on both sides sure. of the fuselage. So it just looks so good and looks it so realistic. It catches the flavor of the full scale. Absolutely. You know, it looks yeah. like the full scale uh, Corsair when the mm -hmm. flaps come down, the way they kind of just splay out and spread. Exactly. So yeah. you have all the all the pieces there. And, sure. And I think the struts sure. really finished it off nicely. Oh, definitely. Um, I, in hindsight now, too, and we won't jump into the review, but um, I would go electric retracts. Not to say there's anything wrong with the Robarts at all. No. This is simplicity of electric simplicity. retracts. Makes it so nice to just... When you plumb your first plane for air retracts, you'll realize mm -hmm. why... Mm -hmm. It's worth the extra money to go with the electrics that Robart's coming out with. Yeah, yeah, Robart um, retract. Robart makes a nice retract yep. as well. So, um, and, and you don't have the 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 additional point of potential failure no. of having the system undercharged or under yep. prime, so you don't have enough air in the system. Or one Get, tiny little leak somewhere on yep, a joint. Little tiny leak that you yep. don't realize that you didn't have last flight, and now you do. Exactly. And all of a sudden, you don't have enough pressure yep. in your tank to be able to uh, yep. to push those retracts. And it takes down. some some foresight really when you're putting the kit together to not only accommodate all the wiring for the servos mm -hmm. all the linkage that's involved in that now all of a sudden you have an air tank you have all the air hoses you got a valve you got everything that you got to think about yep that you can't put one in front of the other mm -hmm. and mess up the spot yep. you know sometimes it leaves you one place to put it in absolutely you know? and it adds to the build and you on this kit i'd say conservatively you're going to have 12 hours oh, uh, yeah. by the time you get it all together not to say you can't have the airframe together quickly yeah. and all the major components but since this is a gold edition, you're going to be paying more attention to detail. Sure. And you're going to want to finish everything out nicely and, and probably yeah. add some more options in yourself. So sure. um, you'll spend a good 12 hours of, of tinkering on the bench before it's ready to go up and fly. I'd say easily, yeah. Speaking of flying, let's go out let's to check out the flight footage. Make sure you come back for part two for the review scoring.